So there are two game jams that I want to participate in. The Boundless Jam hosted by Reese, and the Ben Bonk Jam hosted by, of course, Brackies. Each jam has its own theme that we need to adhere to, and its own time limit. The Boundless Jam runs from June 20th at 3pm to June 27th at 3pm. Now we couldn't start our entry until the Ben Bonk Jam started on the 25th. This gave us only a 43 hour overlap to make the Bonkless Jam a reality. How about an infinite runner where you can press just one button to swap to the second side? You start by running on the floor and you can switch over to the ceiling, or as I like to call it, an Australian simulator. You need to avoid obstacles to avoid falling into the ominous pit on the left. It is then the objective of the game to be... bonkless? Step 1 is to create a player script and tell it to invert the gravity of the player's rigid body whenever the spacebar is pressed. Step 2 is to add some obstacles to the scene, hit play and spam the spacebar watching it not working for 2 minutes as your soul leaves your entire body because it should be working but it's just not. No. Step 3 is to cry in the corner. Step 4 is to realise that you just didn't add the player script to the player object so of course it wasn't going to work blank you idiot. <coughs> As I said, this is a super simple mechanic to implement, although I don't like how floaty it can be when you change gravity in mid-air. To amend this, let's stop all the velocity the box has on the y-axis when we switch. This makes everything feel a lot more snappy and responsive. To make it feel like you actually have some sort of control over the player and not just flipping gravity, we can also add a small jump in the opposite direction to add an extra layer to the movement mechanic. Now this is feeling just right, so what's next? We can actually use procedural generation to randomise each run of the game hopefully giving you an incentive to keep playing it. This can be done by making what I call level sections as prefabs, then bunging them all into a helpfully named array called level sections. When the game starts, we randomly select 10 of them and place them in the scene. I know this approach can work, as it's how I built Paddle Panic a while back now for the Blackthorn Prod Game Jam. For now, the sections are as simple as a flat boy to act as a safe zone and some different variations on humps to get in the way. Now these are great, but currently, the player has literally no way to ever get them. To fix this, let's add a rigid body to the level sections so they can be moved with a steady velocity towards the player. The sections are now moving perfectly, but so too is the player, so we're effectively not actually moving anywhere. Why is this happening? Well, when the player bonks into one of these moving obstacles, it gets its velocity imparted to it and begins to move in that direction as well, even when it's no longer in the way. This can be overcome by setting the x velocity of the player to zero at the end of every frame. Now we have a solid base that we should have plenty of time to expand on with the team. Nah, this might be an issue. After B bomb shoveled coal onto the bonfire that is my ego, I came up with a solution. Let's make this even simpler. So much for actually making art this time round as we planned. We're back to my signature style of a maximum effort here with just two striking colours. To spice things up though, we're going to bravely be using, wait for it, some different colours. Shock horror, I know. To do this, I'm going to need a new colour palette. To make this, come over to any colour field and click the three dots next to swatches. Then create a new library, save it in the project under a useful name, and start adding your colours by clicking on the little icon in the inspector. We can now really easily and quickly swap all the colours in our scene. Fantastic! Instead of doing this manually for all of our level sections though, let's write a little colour script to do it automatically for us. By selecting all the level sections, I can add a component to all of them at once. When the section is created, it gets all the sprites underneath it, so the walls and all the obstacles. And when a set color method is invoked, loops through all of these walls and obstacles and sets them to the desired color. Now when we create the wall, all we need to do is set the color of them to our nice green. Call this game a glob go gab glab because it's looking hmm splendid. To fit this color scheme, B-Bomb threw together a simple game logo, main menu, credits and game over scene. Not so luckily for me though, this is where B-Bomb also decided to launch back into the 18th century, leaving me to finish this game by my lonesome. But I can worry about that tomorrow. So, it's day two, and here's the thing. This game sucks. Currently it's not fun at all because there is no sense of danger, no incentive for the player to continue on their journey. One way I can try to infuse some life into this game is with lava. Right now falling off the edge of the screen doesn't actually seem so bad, maybe the player is just camera shy and would rather not show his face to the hundreds of people watching. Wait. We can use Unity's particle system to fix this and add a way for you to die. Personally, I now think the player is quite hard to read, so let's add a small white outline to them. I think this looks far superior already. A rather hilarious bug ensued though, where the player sometimes spawns inside the walls. 
Having the player being able to move inside a collider is a terrible idea though. No one would ever want to play a game like that, so let's fix it by making sure the first section to spawn is always the flat one. That way there is nothing in the way at the start of the game. Ah, uh, isn't gaming more fun? Yes, no, no, no. The game has a loose state, but positive reinforcement is a much better incentive than negative punishment, so let's look at adding a win condition. As the idea of this game is an infinite runner, the best incentive is to add a timer. When you eventually die, the time is displayed to you. I I don't really know why you would want to try and improve your score, go and do something better with your time, like listening to this message from today's sponsor. <laughs> Here is my Spaghetti Brain game down code for the timer. First grab the number of seconds that have passed by flooring the total time passed. Now do the same but just grab the milliseconds by rounding to two decimal places and subtracting the number of seconds. The string for the number of seconds is easy, just convert the integer to a string. Milliseconds are a little bit more complicated though because, well, this happens. To fix this, convert it to a string, pad right with zeros to ensure there's always enough digits, and then just grab the third and fourth digits of the string. Okay, so let's take stock of what we have now. You can jump over to the other side, and well, I mean, that's about it. The difficulty curve isn't even a curve, it's more of a straight line with no gradient because the difficulty is the same for the entire run. Now we have a timer in place though, we can use this to make the game harder the longer you were alive for. This way it becomes a lot more about skill the further you get than just being patient enough to sit through the game. Remember the section move speed from earlier? Let's increase it by some multiple every 5 seconds. Doubling might be a bit much as you can see here, every 5 seconds the speed is increasing on and on forever as long as you can keep go- Okay, well forever in this case meaning 10 blocks. So I think it's now time to tackle the infinite level generation system that I was putting off. One way to do this would just be to crank up the number of sections from 10 to 10,000 but that has the slightly inconvenient side effect of crashing my entire PC. Maybe something a bit less dramatic is 100, might still load, but it's terribly wasteful. Indeed, what we need instead is to just create them as and when the player runs out. Using a queue, which is a first in first out data structure, we can add our sections to this queue when they are made. Then when we have too many, destroy the one at the front of the queue, which represents the one the player used ages ago and won't even notice that it's missing. In the dying moments of the Boundless Jam, I managed to throw together a quick itch page and submit to both game jams with 20 minutes remaining. This challenge was absolutely ridiculous. Please, I beg you all to never do this. Save yourselves. However, as it has become tradition for this channel, I shall end the video with the current world record of the game. Best of luck to everyone else that entered the jam. This was an awful experience, but tons of fun. And despite that sentence not making any sense whatsoever, remember, as always, happy coding, everyone. Call this game a Globgo Gab. <laughs> oh, this is gonna have so many takes. Globgo Gab Glab. Glob <laughs> I'm saying it so much, not even a word anymore. Globglo Gab Glab. Call this game a Glob <laughs> Call this game a Globglo Gab Glab because it's looking, hmm, splendid. This is so gonna make the end of the video, isn't it? Thank <laughs> you.